Okay. Thank you. Uh, call, the meet, call the meeting to order and roll call, please, Mrs. Fagan. Oh, we're going to do that? Uh, it's on the agenda. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ms. Doherty? Present. Um, Mr. Pulowski? Present. Mr. Fiore? Present. Mrs. Fagan's present. Uh, Ms. Joe Martin, Mr. Martin? Present. Mrs. Almeida? Present. Uh, I'm missing somebody. Mr. <coughs> DeMello? Present. Who did I say? Oh, Madam Mayor. Present. Thank did I get anybody? Nope, we're all set. Okay. Yeah, okay. Joe. We can go right to the... Oh, you, David. <laughs> okay, we can go right to the superintendent's update, Mr. Cabral. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So I'm going to go between some communications or documents I have here in front of me, and I'm also going to share a document uh, in a little bit, which may result in, not every, in everyone not being able to see each other but you'll be able to see, to see the document on the screen that, uh, that we'll be discussing. So the first thing I'd like to do is three, a couple things, is to give you an update based on the conference call we had with Commissioner Riley yesterday. Uh, we'll have the leadership team to give you an update on the work we're doing in the district. And then as requested, I'll provide you with an FY20 budget update. And I also have Attorney Gay present to talk about the work we've been doing with EF Tours to uh, make our families whole. So the first thing that we discussed yesterday on our call with the commissioner, was regarding September 14th, 2020. You may be aware that they have moved the Mar Boston Marathon date from Patriots Day to September 14th, 2020. That will be a holiday, so there will be no school on September 14th, 2020. So uh, Kathy Perry will be working with uh, myself and the administration to update the calendar to reflect that change. And we've had some internal discussions uh, with the leadership team regarding how to utilize that day as a potential a professional day. If, uh, we're gonna, if it's gonna be a holiday. So we have some thoughts around that day and we'll, we'll bring that to the school committee at a regular meeting. Uh, to date, 65% of all districts have completed the tech survey. Uh, Mrs. Bonneau has asked me to resubmit our data based on the latest information that she's receiving. So we'll be updating our totals to give Desi a more accurate account of who needs Wi-Fi and who has access to Chromebooks or a device in their home. Uh, this week, uh, Desi will be issuing additional guidance regarding remote learning. We, we expect to have that by the end of the week. But uh, Desi will be sharing best practices. They'll also be providing us with a tentative reopening plan uh, that will involve a lot of safety measures. Uh, Desi is also working on identifying essential standards or power standards that they believe or we believe students need to have under their belt in order to be promoted to the next grade. So that'll impact the way we create our packets as we wanna make sure that the power standards are incorporated into the work we distribute to our families. Excuse me, let me turn this off, sorry. Uh, the commissioner again stressed that online learning is not the equivalent to, the online learning is not the equivalent to remote learning. Remote learning is still envisioned to include offline learning packets using educational materials, reading lists, and project-based learning opportunities. And this week, we clarified that with our principals so that our principals could clarify that with staff. And when we get into the education piece, I'll let Mr. Barada know or discuss some of the work that he did and the outcome of a meeting that he had with the TEA yesterday to make some revisions to our packets, which we believe will really streamline our packets and make things more efficient and easier to handle at home for our parents. The governor stressed the importance of all families completing the census. So I'll use this opportunity to let everyone who watches this meeting know that we need everyone to do their part and to complete the census. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of dollars, many dollars tied to the census. So the more families that complete the census, the more dollars that will come into the state and obviously dollars that come into the state impact education. So as of now, the state is behind uh, where it should be with completing the census. So we wanna remind our families and we'll continue to remind our families and we'll look at ways where we can spread that word at our lunch sites as well to remind families to complete the census, whether it's online or paper and pencil or by phone. Regarding competency determination, which is the MCAS, the March retest results will be out shortly. Throughout the state of Massachusetts, there are about 3,600 seniors, 12th graders, who have not met the CD requirement. So DESE is gonna do everything in its power to make sure that our seniors you know, have every opportunity to meet that requirement and graduate with their peers. 
So we expect the number to go down from 3,600 once the data or the test results are released. And DESE will then issue guidance regarding retakes, which will be their focus. And I anticipate that there'll be modifications to the way students are administered and take that test. So we expect additional information this week, and I've shared this with Mr. Matos and his team. Regarding opening schools, uh, more information is expected to come on that in the near future. DESE has begun studying best practices uh, in other countries that have begun opening up. So we, they are looking in, to see what other countries are doing, what measures they are putting in place. And they are also reaching out to medical officials for their guidance and recommendations on what it will look like when we open. And obviously we know we're not opening this, this current school year. It'll be for fall of fiscal 21. So some of the recommended guidance that they're talking about is doing some uh, temperature checks for students. They've talked about a staggered schedule uh, where half the students would participate remotely, half the students would, would attend physically, and then they would swap uh, the next day. So those are just things that DESE is exploring. Nothing has been decided. I want to stress that DESE is just exploring these possibilities when we return. There was talk about students and staff wearing masks and gloves, uh, utilizing the same guidance for staff and students who are sick, encouraging them to stay home. And then obviously, uh, should there be an outbreak in a particular school, they will offer guidance on whether or not we just close a school or if we need to close the entire district. So obviously, there's still a lot to discover. We're still early on this, and we're just one week into our remote learning plan. So I anticipate a lot of work by myself and the administration in uh, DESE as we continue to move along and prepare for the upcoming year. Uh, Commissioner Riley, again, stressed that the most important thing that we can do as educators and as a group is to remain connected with our families. And I feel very good about the work we've done there. And I'll let Mrs. Perry give an update when it's her turn regarding the outstanding work that she has done with our principals to identify all our students. And uh, I feel that our plan does exactly just that. We've built in the office hours. We've encouraged our staff to stay connected with our students. And just what I see on social media tells me that our staff are doing a great job connecting with our kids. Uh, MCAS for fiscal 21. Uh, as of now, the DESE still plans to administer MCAS next school year. Uh, it will be a traditional MCAS schedule when the 10th graders who missed the MCAS this year uh, take the MCAS next year. And again, we'll receive additional guidance on that. Uh, when this new group of results are released, there will be an opportunity for Mr. Matos and his staff to appeal any student scores. So all appeals will be done by, uh, by uh, will be done electronically. We will not have the opportunity to do uh, issue any appeals, paper and pencil. But uh, Desi will be issuing additional guidance by the end of the week, and I will forward that to Mr. Matos and his team so that they are prepared when the March results from the MCAS are are released. High school graduation middle school send-off and elementary school send-off. Uh, we've already had those discussions internally. Desi will be issuing some guidance there. Mr. Matos has prepared a tentative proposal that I am reviewing with members of the leadership team and is creating drafting communications to our seniors. We've also advised our elementary school principals and middle school principals to begin working collaboratively to give that some thought to what fourth grade send-off and seventh grade send-off will look like. Educator evaluation, DESE has advised us that that is something that needs to be bargained locally. So I've already reached out to James Quaytons, the TEA president, that uh, we need to impact bargain educator eval. So we will do our due diligence and work with the TEA and bring something back to the school committee for your review and approval as well. But summer school, I'm not sure what summer school is going to look like yet. Again, that will all be driven by whether or not we can meet face to face or if we have to continue remotely. So in the days to come or weeks to come, DESE will be issuing additional guidance. And we, some of our schools have received MCAS materials. All MCAS materials have been, uh, principals have been asked to store and hold until DESE advises us how to return those materials back to uh, Malden. Jeff Wilson, Deputy Commissioner, and William Bell, the Senior Associate CFO uh, for DESE, provided us with a financial update regarding fiscal 20 and fiscal 21. So for, regarding fiscal 20, uh, the state plans to continue with its programs. They, don't, they do not anticipate any impact or any slowing down of fiscal 20 spending. And, this, and DESC does not anticipate any 9C cuts 
at this stage. And if there were nine C cuts, chapter 70 is exempt from nine C cuts. Just wanted that uh, everyone to be aware of that. And similar to us, as I'll share with you in a bit, uh, with the state, most spending has already been done as we were seven months into the six, seven, seven months into the school year. And we're getting all of you that shortly. Desi also advised us, or Jeff Wilson and William Bell advised us to continue spending down against our grants uh, to, to apply charges to staffing, supplies, and services. Uh, regarding the CARES Act, currently the CARES Act has about $215 million uh, targeted for Massachusetts. 90% of that funding will flow similar to Title I funds. 10% will be dispersed to the state, by the state, to districts or communities that do not receive or are not eligible for Title I. And there is funding in that 215 million earmarked for summer school. And the big question that superintendents had that I had is can the funds be used to supplant or must the funds be used to supplement our, our programs? And we believe these funds will be available uh, June 2020 and the applications we were told will be published uh, this Friday. So we will be looking for those and uh, applying to make sure that Taunton receives its fair share. And again, I wanna stress that these funds will be awarded similar to how DESE awards many of its grants. The governor has also, the governor has an emergency relief fund with approximately $51 million uh, available. So in total between the CARES Act and the relief fund there's about $266 million available. So DESE will be filing to access those funds this week. And those funds will be earmarked to, to, to support communities and districts that are impacted most negatively. And that would include districts that are high needs or targeted to uh, assist special student populations, such as special education, again, high needs, low income. Regarding fiscal 21, I think I mentioned this last week and I have some additional data to share. So the legislature is back to the, back to the beginning of the starting line in assessing revenue projections for fiscal 21. And there was a consensus meeting, a consensus budget meeting, a revenue meeting held last week. The information that was shared uh, by William Bell was that the state budget was about 44 billion last year. The prediction is a 10% loss. So we're talking about $4.4 billion being lost. And the rainy day fund or the state rainy day account has about $3.8 billion there. So again, I think all eyes at DESE are waiting to see if there'll be any federal, any relief from the federal government to backfill any lost revenue for the state and also for towns and municipalities. And regarding the Student Opportunity Act, uh, what Jeff Wilson and William Bell shared with us is that as these revenue projections are calculated and shared with the governor in DESE, uh, there'll be a determination made to see how much they can fund uh, in the Student Opportunity Act. So they'll have to go back and review those calculations to see how much the state can fund beyond foundation aid. And then last but not least, uh, the two financial officials from DESE did mention that DESE realizes that there will be additional funding needed to support additional nurses, uh, possibly additional transportation, additional technology, and they are working to leverage group purchasing uh, for all districts throughout the Commonwealth. So that is the update that we had with the commissioner. Uh, I'm gonna jump into the FY20 budget update and I'm gonna share the screen. Uh, Mr. Jakes, I need to uh, take you off as the host. So can you make me the host, Steve? All set. Thanks, Steve. So again, you might not be able to see everyone. Um, so again, I provided you with a narrative on where we stand for fiscal 20. And uh, I can share this with you after the meeting along with my notes uh, from the commissioner as well, okay? And uh, there's, also, uh, there's also an update from Mr. Barada that we'll send out shortly. So uh, I just started with a opening paragraph. So as mentioned during the previous school committee meeting, the business office under the direction of Assistant Superintendent of Finance and Operations, Brenda Moynihan, has been working to close out fiscal 20, which is typical for this stage in the school year. However, during the COVID-19 crisis, this work has taken on a greater sense of urgency 
as we want to maximize our FY20 appropriation and reserve our revenue for FY21. So again, this was something I discussed last week, and uh, this is the work that we've been working on remotely uh, with limited access to our accounting uh, software. So for fiscal 20, the school committee approved. So I'm just gonna go through and give, remind you how we developed our budget. So for fiscal 20, the school committee approved a fisc an FY20 budget totaling 94.6. So $94,604,792. So that approved FY20 budget is comprised of a city appropriation totaling $88,249,792 in school apartment revenue totaling $6,355,000. To date, we have expended $63,656,873 and we have encumbered $24,563,239, totaling $88,220,112, which is just below our city appropriation. So the majority of our total, of the total encumbered is salary. So again, we are continuing to pay our staff members uh, for the remainder of the school year. So we've encumbered 22.6 to cover our salaries. And that leaves us with a balance of about $30,000. Uh, and again, other large item, well, other large line items that we've encumbered include transportation, utilities, and out of district tuition. As the business office continues to close out fiscal 20 and verify purchase orders and process them for payment, the totals encumbered will fluctuate. So most likely they will go down because the ladies always encumber on the high end. And then those numbers tend to fluctuate when the actual POs come in. In addition, based on the latest guidance from DESI, which I just discussed, we will also review grants that are expiring to identify salaries, supplies, and services that can be transferred off our appropriation and charged to grants. And again, this is something we do every year as we begin to close out. We, we want to make sure that we are spending down our grants and not returning funds to DESI. We believe the amount incumbent provides the top public schools with enough latitude to close out fiscal 20 utilizing our FY20 appropriation and at the same time minimize our dependency to backfill the approved FY20 budget with revenue. As stated at the previous school committee meeting, I believe this is the best interest of the district to ensure our revolving of funds are positioned, are well positioned in the fiscal 21. So regarding revolving funds, um, and I may make a recommendation if, uh, if I'm allowed, at the close of fiscal 19, the Tom Public School schools had a revolving account balance of approximately $3 million. The revolving account balance sits right now at $3.6 million. The Tom Public Schools has received FY20 revenue in the amount of $1.4 million. It's just rounding things off to be neat, clean. And the committee has encumbered $250,000 to perform security enhancements in our schools. And we have expended about $460,000 from revolving today. If the district were to remove the incumbent total, our revolving balance would increase to almost $3.9 million. So the district still anticipates receiving revenue via school choice. I believe we have two more payments or two more months of payments to receive. I believe we, we should be receiving May and June and we still may not have received April. So we need to check with the business office on that. So I anticipate about another 70 to 80,000 via school choice. And McKinney Vento, which we usually receive in the summer, will probably be somewhere north of 100000 So we probably have another $200,000 in revenue that we should be receiving. So I would think, just using guesstimates, I believe we'll be somewhere around, I believe we'll be somewhere north of $3.5, $3.6 million in our revolving when we close the, the year, if we hold tight and spend down our appropriation. And, and minimize the use of our revolvings. That would be my recommendation. Uh, my other recommendation would be to unencumber or to remove the $250,000 uh, that we've encumbered for the security enhancements. Uh, I know uh, that was work we had talked about doing, but at this stage, I think those funds could be better utilized uh, in FY21 should we need to close any shortfalls or any deficits in our budget. So that would just be a recommendation that, that, I, that, I, that I would make, knowing that every dollar is gonna be scarce uh, moving forward next year. And again, please, I want to remind you that when we built our revenue, that $6.3 million, uh, the school committee authorized the use of $800,000 from the Tom Public Schools revolving account to offset the FY20 budget, which leaves the district with approximately $350,000 to cover any shortfall should we go over 
our FY20 appropriation. Okay, so that's just a snapshot of where we are regarding the FY20 appropriation and also where we stand with regards to revolving. And then the last piece I wanna talk about regarding our operations is that, well, I think I'll save the EF tours for last and ask the leadership team to go over their piece. So with the leadership team, I'd ask Mr. Barada to provide, an, and Mrs. Mulrooney to provide an update on education and also special education related services. Okay, uh, Mrs. Almeida. You're on uh, mute, Mrs. Almeida. Sorry. There you go. Okay, thank you, Madam. Um, before you go on to, to that, there's a couple of questions I had. Can you refresh my memory what 9C cuts are? Yeah, 9C cuts uh, would be any cuts that the state would make to fiscal 20 budget which okay. they've done in the past. I think the last time they did that, that I can recall was 2008, 2009, when we received the stimulus money, funds. Okay. And did you ever get an, ex, uh, an answer about the sur, uh, surplanting? Because there was something before, and maybe David remembers this, um, when years ago, we couldn't surplant. We had to use the money um, in a different way. I don't know, did they answer that question for you? I think you froze, Mr. Cabral. You're frozen. Yeah, you're frozen. All right, I think I'm having, I, I think the wind is playing with my Wi Fi. Yeah. Can everyone yeah. hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can you mind yeah. repeating that second question, please? The sur surplanting. What was your answer on the supplanting when you asked that question? Yeah, they haven't answered us yet. So that was a question that we that I raised as well as other superintendents. So can we supplant or must the funds be used to supplement? So we're waiting for additional guidance on the $215 million part of the CARES Act. Okay, so I imagine we're still gonna, and my other question is we're still gonna continue on um, the same day for our graduation or thereabouts, whatever, in an unconventional way. I mean, that's about six weeks away. So when are the students that did not pass MCAS going to have the opportunity to um, take the test or when is that going to happen? Yeah, Desi hasn't informed us of that yet. So that is part of the guidance and part of the recommendation that they will share with us once the tests are, rele are released. Well, so, did the superintendents um, do anything about that, stating that most kids will be graduating the beginning of June? Yeah, we've shared that with them and they are aware. So uh, we, we're hoping to get some additional guidance this week. If not, we will reach out to Desi. And I know Mr. Mattos has been working with the Hockamock principals, high school principals, mm -hmm. um, to, to start planning what that will look like for our seniors. But obviously, we want to make sure we get as many seniors across the stage so that they uh, can participate in uh, whatever form of graduation we, we hold. Okay. And, and that scenario you just gave us on the budget, I'm sorry? That sheet, the scenario you just gave us on the budget, that sheet, yes. Yes. could you please uh, email that to us? You can have it for my records. Yes, I will send you my notes from my call with Commissioner Riley, as well as that, um, that I will put that summary, that narrative on letterhead and I will email that to you shortly or after this meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. Okay, I think uh, Mrs. Doherty, did you have? Uh, yes, thank you. And Mr. Fiore and then Mr. Souza. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mrs. Almeida asked my, most of my questions. Uh, when are you planning uh, uh, to present deliberation on the FY21 budget to the school committee? Uh, last week we discussed that. Um, I thought we discussed that last week and I thought we talked about waiting till we know what the state has for a figure. I mean, I could build, we could build the budget based on $3.5 million in the chapter 70, which we have uh, with, with no cuts. Uh, and we can present different scenarios if you wish to deliberate that now, or we can wait until we know what the actual figure is. Well, it, it is your best judgment to make that decision in terms of having a full picture, given your conversations with the department and um, with the superintendent's association. Do you have any sense, is it two weeks away, four weeks away? We don't. We don't. Um, we don't. I, I, I haven't heard what is uh, what's taking place at the legislative le legislative level. 
Yeah, so I will make some calls. I will inquire to find out best as possible when what we can expect or when we can expect to hear from them. I will also seek guidance um, from Jeff Wilson and William Bell on again what figure we should be using. And I know we were we were expecting or we were going to advocate for the local contribution as well as the chapter 70 increase, which would have put us just north of five million. But I think realistically, uh, five, 3.5 million would be our best case scenario. So I, I think I would say we build our budget around 3.5 million increase and prepare in the event that there are cuts or we discuss utilizing additional reserves to cover any shortfall. Why I feel it's important to build our reserves uh, for, for next year. Uh, thank you. And just one more question. It has to do with the numbers of our students who are in the makeup MCAS track. How many students are I don't have I don't have that number on thank you. Thank you, Mayor. The You're number welcome. I shared was for the state. So we don't have 3,600 students in time. It's no. <laughs> and you know, I would just add to the budget discussion that I think it would be wise for anyone doing budgets right now to go as low as possible um, and really prepare for it. The very worst case scenario because we don't know what's happening with anyone's budget, including the state. And I think it's gonna be, um, it's fair to say that it could be very painful for all of us. And the, the more well-prepared we are to expect the worst, I think the, as hard as it is, the better off we'll be. I agree, Madam Mayor. You know, we've had some discussions internally with the leadership team um, as well and our principals to uh, begin thinking, you know, what this might look like moving forward. And I don't know if we discussed this last week, I apologize, but um, I know the cities and towns in, in the state may consider doing 112 budgets. I don't know if the school committee does that or not. Yeah, we that was something that was that I discussed last week during my update as uh, something that if the state does not have its budget approved or in place by July 1st, what DESE stated was that they may issue a 112th budget. All right, thank you. Um, so, Mr. Fiore. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, to follow up on sort of the doom and gloom about uh, budget projections, I, I hate to make things sound worse, but all that we're talking about with revenue problems, we're not even taking into consideration what money is actually going to be worth in the future. I mean, the fact is, we doubled the federal budget with, with the CARES Act, and there's no way the government is going to be able to tax enough to be able to meet that, which means they're going to be printing more money, which means we're going to see inflation like we haven't seen since the guns and butter days of the Vietnam War. And uh, you know what may be worth a million dollars now might be only worth like 600,000 a year from now. And you know, the buying power is, is something we're, we're gonna have to consider. We may have to make some serious changes in midstream just because costs may change midstream because of inflation. Thank you, Mr. Fiore. Mr. Souza. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That's a tough act to follow. Uh, that, that Mr. Fiore is definitely uh, very spot on when it comes to those comments. Let me tell you, uh, there's a lot of moving parts going to end up for this FY21 budget. And um, the Student Opportunity Act hasn't even, I mean, Mr. Cabral talked about it, but we're talking just to try to level fund our budget and then the stuff, Student Opportunity Act money, which they still don't have a funding mechanism for. So. And, my, and I have grave concerns about the what the um, health effects are going to be for uh, going into the fall. We lost your audio, David, uh, Mr. Souza. We can't hear you, Mr. Souza. He maybe cannot hear us either. I think we got no. Now you're on mute. Uh, how's that? Any better? There you go. Yes. I said, uh, sorry about that. I'm glad I was looking at Mr. Cabral because he gave me the signal. Um, we just don't know what the uh, what the uh, problems 
that we're going to have in the fall FY21 budget as far as leading into the fall with all these new health restrictions that are going to be. We may have to double the bus for us. We just don't know what that's going to be, the classrooms. Uh, so there's a lot of unknowns that are going to happen here. Um, but the Student Opportunity Act hasn't even been funded yet. So all of that, and we don't know where we're going to be. So uh, I, I echo the, the Madam Mayor's, um, the Madam Mayor's uh, voice on being as conservative as possible. And um, I will discuss with the superintendent um, where we're at um, before next week. And maybe uh, in a few weeks, we have some more hard numbers where we can make a presentation to the school committee. Um, I think every week he learns something new, so we just don't know where we're going to be. But I certainly, I would hope sometime the beginning of May, if we don't have the hard numbers, we'll have to put our own numbers together and then back out from there is what my expectation was would be um, with, uh, I'm sure Mr. Cabral's uh, in concurrence with that. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Susan. Mrs. Fagan? Yeah, one of the things I'm concerned about as far as going back to school, all the, as you said, the unknowns, all those buses we have, all those vans, those buses drew three tiers. I mean, are we gonna sanitize buses in between tiers? I don't know how we socially distance students. I was reading something today, they said for kids to separate desks. I said, what desks? We have tables. So, I, I, you know, I see a lot of the way that we went now is becoming something that isn't gonna be conducive to what they want anymore. It's funny, I went into a bank the other day. I don't know if any of you go to Crescent Credit Union, they remodeled the whole inside, took down all the panels between the people and the, the tellers, and now they're all back up. They're up in the supermarkets, all the things. You know, there's been such a, I don't, I don't think anybody ever expected any of this to happen. So I, I think there's an awful lot of ramifications that we're gonna have to sit down and talk about. and how do we afford extra teachers in classrooms? I, I, I just don't see that. It looks like Mr. Cabral has a response. Yeah, just if I, if I could, Madam Mayor, just respond to uh, Mrs. Fagan's question. Um, what, and I, I saw this somewhere on the news. So prior to the outbreak of COVID-19, everything was always referred to as post 9-11, right? Think about post 9-11. Now we take off our shoes when we go to the airport, we're removing our belts, we're having full body scans. I mean, it really changed the way we travel and the way you know, we, we act here in America. So now we're, now we're past that we're gonna be past COVID-19, so to be post COVID-19, and things are gonna look very, very different in society, in our homes, and in our schools. So we anticipate as we get through this, the thing, you are right, things are gonna look different. We have a lot of questions that we need to answer ourselves and for the public to ensure parents feel safe returning their students to schools. And we also need to take into consideration our staff. You know, we need to make sure that our staff are safe coming to schools as, as we know, uh, uh, older folks are more prone and more susceptible to this disease. So uh, we have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, I don't see our work slowing down. We had a little chance to breathe when we uploaded the remote learning plan, but things have ramped uh, right back up for us as you know, we need to make sure that things are in place for next year. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. DeMello. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, through you, Mayor, to the superintendent. It's quite hard to ask my questions because I don't have the budget narrative in front of me, but from memory, uh, I know that the, the budget was approximately 94 million and change. And based on the narrative you shared with us, we had 60 some odd million spent, 20 some odd million encumbered, and of that 22 million was for salaries yet you're showing a $30,000 surplus. And based on my quick addition, it looked like it was a $6 million surplus. So again, without it in front of me, that's what I recall from memory. How, how, how am I off by $6 million almost? Because we are, let me back up. So we approved a $94 million budget, yep. right? So what, what we are working on is to spend down our appropriation and carry over as much reserves revenue into fiscal 21. That's that $6 million that you're talking about, Mr. DeMello. But yet you, you stated 30,000 as a surplus. 30,000 remaining in our appropriation. Okay, again, it's, it's quite difficult without the actual um, we have, we have two piece of paper pools. in front of us, but. We have, we have two pools of money. 
our revenue yep. and our appropriation. We have right. thirty thousand. If so, if we if we keep everything encumbered the way it is, we have about thirty thousand dollars left in our appropriation, and we have our revenue which we can utilize to have it or offset any deficits in our budget, which we have done in the past. So, you know, again, we've talked about busing issues as far as do we still pay the buses, don't pay the buses. I'm sure that's a big chunk of change. Is, is that part of those numbers that you share with us today or that's still to be resolved? No, we have a, we have a very good idea on what that's gonna be, but we still haven't finalized our negotiations with h and Bloom. So that is coming and that has been reflected in these numbers. So what we've done is again, is we've shifted. Uh, we wanna make sure that we spend down our appropriation. So any surplus in our appropriation will be used to offset any additional costs so that we can minimize the use of our revenue. Uh, 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 one, one more thing, Madam Mayor. Uh, I mean, I'm just very concerned. We're now April 22. It looks like we're not meeting till May 6th now at our next regular school committee meeting. Uh, and these numbers, I've been asking for these numbers since March 26th to be exact. And I understand a lot of circumstances came in between this, but uh, I'm still at a loss of why we don't have some numbers. I mean, you know, and you know, this narrative that you share with us today uh, is not acceptable to me. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate an update as quickly as possible on where we stand with the budget of FY20. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, moving on, Mr. Cabral. And then the last piece is, uh, and I, I appreciate Attorney Gay being patient. Uh, so I think I'll cover Attorney Gay's piece uh, now. So we've been working with EF Tours. We sent the letter out to EF Tours by Attorney Gay, and I participated in a conversation with uh, representatives from EF Tours based on the guidance I received from Attorney Gay, and they are not budging uh, based on their latest proposal which was to refund everyone who chooses not to attend the trip, all their funds except for $500. That is their latest offer that they have made. Uh, it's not on their website. They have changed their process, the way they report on their website. As uh, Mr. Ferrata can do a better job of explaining it once we get there. But they are pretty much addressing each group uh, of trips month by month. So the May, the May groups or the May trips, they've been working with their directors and discussing you know, what, their, uh, what their possibilities are or opportunities to recoup funding. And for the June folks, which is us, they've extended the deadline to cancel to May 15th and they've dropped the penalty or the amount that fa families would lose uh, down to $500. So I have attorney Gay here if there are any questions, uh, he can provide some input on the work that we've been doing and I'll possibly offer some, some guidance as we continue down this, down this road. I've also worked on a letter with, with Attorney Gay, um, so kind of outlining what we've done and letting parents know where we stand and what their options are. If I may, uh, Madam Mayor, sure. um, Superintendent Cabral has accurately stated what's been going on. Uh, we've had correspondence back and forth the proposal that they have made, which he just outlined, uh, I've checked today with some other school departments and some, uh, their proposal is consistent with uh, other companies similar to this uh, with a $500 uh, forfeiture, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, and, and, and I've also been told, although I can't confirm this, that in some places they haven't actually gone down to five hundred dollars they they've stayed at their original a thousand i i don't see where we have any more leverage that we can present uh, superintendent cabral has a draft letter going to the parents uh, it's it's a tough situation for everybody but i think that this is probably the best deal they're going to get and as you know as it is i mean they have legal rights that they can pursue on their own but uh, being america you don't recover your costs if you win, and therefore, it'll probably cost them more than $500 just to file a complaint. So um, unfortunately, I think that's where we are in a, in a tough time. Um, I've also thought about, uh, superintendent mentioned that some, there had been some thought about reimbursing the parents from school funds, but I've looked into that and I don't think that's legally possible. Um, it would, uh, would violate a, a number of prospective statutes and policies. 
So it's an unfortunate situation, but they do have, uh, they have their contractual rights. Um, I frankly think that they're, they're in a tough spot and $500 is probably the best deal they're gonna get. Thank you, Attorney Gay. Thank you. Any questions? I mean, I, it's pretty straightforward, unfortunately, from our, pers our perspective. But I think the superintendent's letter will explain that to the parents. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. DeMello and then Mrs. Almeida. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, Attorney Gay, I, I understand what you're saying, that this could be the best offer based on industry or whatever, but I don't agree with you. Uh, uh, just recently, uh, we were very successful in recouping uh, alumni funds on another company that was traveling abroad in the month of May. Uh, and again, they were sticking firm with the $500 non-refundable that everybody signed on the dotted line, but yet we all got it back. Uh, I am very much aware that through ASTA, the American Society of Travel Agents and other organizations, uh, they are getting federal funds uh, to recoup uh, a lot of these monies that are being lost. And uh, EF, I'm sure, is one of those companies. So I, I think that uh, my next question is, can we as a school committee sue EF Tours? And if so, what is the expense? My, my initial reaction is no, we can't. We have no contract with them. We have no we're not, contract. We're not them. an agency to this whole no, setup no. as the school department, as no. the top public schools? We're not an agency. We're not a, we're not a co we're not, we have no privity of contract. We don't commit any school dollars to these travel uh, that, that I'm aware of. So I don't see what legal standing we would have. It, just the part that our, our faculty are, are deriving a benefit of accompanying these trips is not a agency relationship. No, they're, they're tra traveling. Then uh, their expenses are not paid by the school department. Well, it's being paid they're by the students, there. right? Right, but so they're they're uh, they're serving a purpose, but they're technically they're being paid theoretically through the funds from ETEF EF tours. Um, now, the ninety three A is that the small claims? Is that what it's called? Ninety three A. Ninety three A is an unfair business practice. Is That's that a, is that is that a small claims type of case? Like say twenty nine dollars? No, no, it's not. No. No, they, and, and, and Mr. DeMello, a 93A would not be practical here. This company hasn't done anything wrong. I mean, I understand what you're saying, and, 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 and they may be getting some funds. I don't know that, but they haven't done anything wrong. They didn't cause this, and I don't think there's been any unfair business practice because the contract specifically says that you have potential for non-refundable funds. So... Um, a strict breach of contract case would be difficult even for the parent to, to be prevailing on because they haven't breached the contract. Now, whether they can justify keeping the funds or not, again, it, it, would, it would be financially difficult for a family to pursue this. Small claims might work. But right. Yeah. That, that's what I'm thinking. That's, if every family true. filed a small claims act, oh, what is the could, cost? Twenty nine dollars or something to file a small they claims? They could do a small claims. OK, yeah. so I mean, it's a small cost, right? Do you know what it is? Yes. No, it, it's, it's small. I don't know. The, the fees have gone up in a few things, but they're not very expensive. Okay. Okay. You're right. So, so if, if every family filed a small claims, uh, would that be potentially <laughs> well I don't know but ET may look at it differently if they have to answer all those sure um, well exactly that's what I'm yeah. thinking and and the school department picks up the cost of 40 claims at $30 or whatever whatever the cost is I um, 50 claims it's not whatever. a lot of money uh, Mr. DeMello but how, I, how do you how do you pay uh, tax dollars from families who didn't go on trips and use it to support families who did go on trips well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm honestly afraid of being sued by the parents that, you know, we're not doing our part of the deal, to be honest with you. Um, That's what I'm looking at. Um, obviously, anybody can sue anybody for anything, right? right. I, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not going to lose sleep over that type of lawsuit against us, though. I'm sure. sure. Okay. Uh, it's a tough situation. I mean, I wish I could give you a better answer, but uh, I don't see us getting any more leverage than we've already tried. I mean, we can try again. I'm not saying we can't try again. We will, we can still do that if you want to. We can try, superintendent and I can make another round at it. 
but his oh. his the takeaway that he had yesterday was fairly definitive. If if you can show me, uh, someone can show me that they're getting something directly, but I know that um, at least I'm fairly certain that in two other school districts they have they're not giving them a 500. They're they're keeping the whole thing. Now, what are Madam Mayor, if, if I could just uh, retract, uh, this, this is through you, Madam Mayor, to Mr. Barada. Wasn't there a trip that was supposed to be scheduled to Dominican Republic in April that was canceled way in advance and all funds were received back by every student on that trip? Yes. <clears throat> and I also think it was, um, I think our district was an outlier in canceling that. That was down to Dominican where there was some health concerns. Mm -hmm. So it could very well have been done because not many districts took our path of suspending the trip. Right. So but it is correct that they were refunded. Uh, Mr. Cabral, I has something I'd like to just let Mr. Cabral talk, please. I, have, I brought that up in my conversation with the Massachusetts director and the person who oversees the trip for Taunton High School, Mr. DeMello. I didn't reference the Dominican Republic and how they, uh, we canceled that trip and our families were able to recoup all their funds because I believe during that time there was the issue with the contaminated liquor and, uh, and people were passing away. I did reference that, uh, which what the Massachusetts director stated is because of the, uh, the, because of what's taken place with the attorney general's office, uh, they are issuing the same guidance to all communities because they don't wanna feel, they don't wanna be in a position where they treated one district differently uh, than another. Uh, as all many communities have gone to the general on this matter. So they don't want to be charged with a unfair labor practice because one district received a certain benefit over the other. With regards to the Dominican trip, she mentioned because of their insurance policy, they were, they were able to recoup whatever funds because it was, it was an isolated trip. It wasn't a, uh, a class action, so to speak. Okay, I have nothing else. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeMello. Okay, moving on, uh, just a minute, Mr. Pulaski. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so I just have a question. So I believe we have two or three other tours planned with the EF tours for next year. Are we gonna be providing any sort of guidance to our parents as to what they should do as far as the ongoing payments? Oh, Mr. Cabral, you're on mute. Sorry, Madam Mayor. Uh, Mr. Barada, one trip next year, or do we have more than one? Uh, you have the one that was postponed due to enrollment with the Netherlands, I believe, and then there are two um, non-school committee approved trips put out there as a possibility. So what I found out was that when the policy was put in place, there was always a question of when, when word gets out and saying, hey, we're thinking about planning a trip, Here's what we're looking at, say Italy or whatever. Families then would, prior to school committee preliminary approval, would begin to put deposits down because the rates might have been better at that time. So nothing has been sent down. In fact, it would be this time this year that the school committee would normally receive a preliminary approval packet for future field trips or international travel. Mr. Barada, had any funds then for those upcoming trips been deposited or sent to EF Tours, or are they in the student activity account at the high school? I'll have to check with the, the Amsterdam and Netherlands trip. But again, uh, these money goes directly to, yeah. my understanding is it's pulled off of parents' accounts and directly to EF Tours. Sorry, you're right, Mr. Barada, you're right. I, I was thinking field trips like we used to do at the schools where we'd collect the money and then send it all once collected. We certainly can. We certainly can supplement our letter to the parents, John, about possible future cases. We certainly can do that. All right, we can work on that offline, Mr. G Attorney Gay. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mrs. Almeida. Mrs. Fagan, did you have your hand up? This is Al Mrs. Almeida was before. Oh. Okay. okay, so Mrs. Almeida, Mrs. Fagan, and then Mr. Souza. Thank you, Madam. Okay, this question's to Attorney Gay. The, um, the trips are contracts that are signed by the parents, is it, Anora? That's correct. Okay, and we just approved them for what reason? This is, this is why I'm asking this question. If the parents already signed the contracts, why, why did the school committee 
um, why do we have to approve the trip? We sanction it because it's a school trip, school sponsored trip. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know, excuse me, I don't know what the practice has been, uh, Mrs. Almeida. Um, it's, it's, it's school sponsored in, in an indirect general way, I guess, but yeah. We don't participate in it. Maybe Chris could answer that better than me. Because my, my question to you, um, David, is because you being our attorney, do you think perhaps maybe we should not um, sanction these trips? Only because why should we vote on something that we have no control over? I think that the last time we talked about this, the superintendent made a point about controlling the students or having them be responsible and, and be subject to rules and regulations so that they can't go overseas and act like crazy people and come back and be students at Taunton High School. Maybe John could respond to that. Oh, okay, yeah. No, uh, I yeah, do, remember, I I I do remember that conversation. Yeah, I think Mr. Cabral had something. Did, did you have something to add, Mr. Cabral? Yeah. No, I was just going to echo what, Mr. what Attorney Gay mentioned. Yeah. I believe part of the reason for the school committee signing off mm -hmm. was to provide leverage on student discipline matters. Mm -hmm. So I would think that, I mean, I don't have any children going to this trip or anyone that, I mean, I know people that are going on the trips, the various trips, but I would think that, I, I would prefer not to, to ever use the CF tour company again for Taunton Public Schools. But then again, you're telling me that other tour companies are doing the same things and not reimbursing less. Mr. Matt DeMello is shaking his head no, so maybe he knows a tour company that's... We need to be very cautious of who we allow to control our trips. And um, all the contracts, I think, should be read before the parents have the opportunity to sign them before they're approved. Did, do you want to answer that, Mr. Cabral? I just wanted to say I was thinking along the same lines and going a step further to make sure that we uh, review the language regarding cancellation and reimbursement and that we add language with whatever vendor we work with in the future. If the yeah. school committee continues to want to offer or sign off on these trips, that we yeah. have clear language regarding what families will be entitled to uh, should they cancel. We need yeah, to make sure that the families are put first. I think it's our duty to, to kind of protect our students and the parents in this respect. And I think that given that fact, we really should look at the contracts before we say, okay, here are the contracts, you need to sign them. Because I think that that's given, we're given our permission for them to go based because it's a school function. But then on the other hand, we're not supporting them because there's no mechanism for them to get out of a situation. I mean, everyone that right now, all the airlines, I mean, I've had a trip booked for a while and um, the airlines are giving back your money with no problem at all. The only thing that they're keeping is the sales tax. Why are they keeping the sales tax? I don't know, but they give you a voucher back for the amount of the trip less the sales tax. So. Thank um, you. I think that we need to really look at that before we do any more travels, especially if there's one already in the works for next year with Amsterdam and Italy and whatever other place. Those contracts need to be looked at. And I don't know if I have to make that in the form of a motion, because if I do, I will. If I have a second. So. Second. Well, let's, uh, let's do the rest of the deliberation first. Hang on, motion made and seconded on discussion, Mr. Souza. You're on mute, Mr. Souza. I still, I still want my talk on the other subject matter, but I'm going to talk on this because I just happen to be raised my hand first. Um, this is going to be a policy change because I think we're going to need to send this to, to uh, for policy change because uh, I think what we should do is we should have a, a, a written uh, policy, a written uh, sheet that the parents sign off on that they're fully aware of the refund policy. We lost your audio again, Mr. Souza. Mr. Souza. Mr. Souza, we cannot hear you. Okay, how about that? Yes. Sorry about that. 
this is going to be a policy change because we're going to need to add a sheet to the policy that's going to say XYZ parent has read XYZ tour company refund policy and I understand it fully and blah, 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 blah. I think that that's what Mrs. Almeida is saying. Uh, no, that's not what I'm saying. Okay, uh, so there was a motion. Mr. Souza, we, we cannot hear you again, Mr. Souza. Mr. Souza. Mr. Souza. Hear exactly what the motion is going to do first. Thank you. We're going to yield. Okay, um, Mrs. Almeida, do you want to repeat I'll your motion? Certify the motion. I want, before any contract is signed by any parent or any contract is given to a parent, I want the attorney to look at it and highlight the areas that are concern, of concern and to see if the company will change them. If there is a non-refundable deposit, parents need to be made aware of that ahead of time. Without Again, a doubt. Again, I'm, I'm, I know I'm jumping in, Madam Mayor, but that's a policy change. We have a we have a tour policy that would be in addition to the tour policy. We just can't make a motion that says that we're going to do this deferential difference from it's the not, policy. It's not a change, Mr. Um, you're wrong, Mr. Sousa. It's not a change. It's just an added step before we approve a trip. It's an added step. All we do is approve. It's not a policy change at all. Mr. Cabral. Just a point of clarification. So we, any contract that does come across my desk, we do have legal review before I sign off on any contract for the town public schools. So that, that is a step that we do have in place. But however, we have not done that with EF tours or any travel agency because the contract is with the family in EF tours. But that is a step that we can, uh, we, we can, we can add if it doesn't change the policy. So Attorney Gay, would that change the policy, adding that step? I'm not sure it would change the policy, but I think the policy idea is, is something that should be explored by the committee because I think even if I looked at that contract and said, I, this is what I think you need to do or don't need to do, I think what Mr. Sousa is trying to say is we need to have something from the parent saying, I've looked at that and I fully understand what's being, what I to do and therefore they can't come to us later and say I didn't understand and I, I think that's both what everybody wants. Right. A point of information every trip that any student goes on a parent has to sign a release is that not correct that's part of our policy. Right but that may not that may not necessarily encompass the fact that they understand the, re the refund policy uh, Mrs. Almeida. I think I don't think it's a major change for either one, but I, I think the motion is fine and I think Mr. Sousa's point is well taken. Okay. Okay, so can we vote on the motion? Okay, I'll incorporate Mr. Uh, Sousa's, um, make a friendly amendment to the motion to incorporate Mr. Sousa's um, concerns. To make it part of the policy. Make it part of the original motion, yeah. Um, Mrs. Doherty and then Mr. Falowski. <laughs> Mrs. Doherty, you're on mute. While I understand um, Mrs. Almeida's uh, issue and uh, why she's making a recommendation to put this into the somewhere policy, I think that we probably have the issue of field trips addressed in many places, perhaps in the student handbook in our policy manual, there may be a lot of references across the district in terms of implementation of that policy. Uh, when we get recommendations for field trips, we have a pretty substantial packet of information that comes to us for us to review. I would rather see all of that information in one place so that we can see what, if anything, the existing documents say about the issue that Mrs. Almeida is um, recommending for change. I don't feel comfortable voting on it unless I see in front of me what the documents look like and then make a recommendation uh, going forward. I'd rather see this on our agenda for our next regular meeting with the accompanying materials so that we can make a, an informed decision about what we're doing here. Okay. Thank um, you all, Mayor. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Well, Mrs. Almeida, did you have something directly on that before Mr. Palazzo? Yes. 
Yes, please. The, the point is, we're not going to have anything before us because we don't have a contract to look at. And that's the point that I was trying to make, to have the attorney look at the contract before the contract has gone off to the parents to sign and any kind of information that might be pertinent to the trip that the parents are aware of. Because sometimes you just sign it because, I don't know. I know like if my kid came home and said, mom, we're going to go on a trip, blah, blah, blah. The school's doing this, da, da, da. You need to sign here. Okay, stupid me. I just sign because the school's going to do it and that's it. But if somebody, if I probably would feel more comfortable if I had someone like the attorney look at the paper and say, all that, my, my concern about a trip would be how much is it? Who's going to be the chaperones? And is he going to have a good time? That's it. I don't read all the legal stuff because... Shame on me for not doing it, but I just don't do it. Okay. Because I, I think most parents are like that when it comes to their children. They want them to have fun. Thank you. Mr. Pulowski? Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. So I guess on discussion. So um, I have signed my child up for one of the trips next year, Italy. I did read the contract. I do understand what the <laughs> refund policy is. I signed up for it. I've been paying for it. It's automatically coming out of my checking account. So, you know, I've probably paid $600 or so towards the, the trip. So I guess my, my question is we've been dealing, we've been going on these trips, Ton Public Schools students have been going on these trips of EF tours for like 20 years or so. So has, has no one from the school system ever taken a look at one of these contracts? Because it's not like this is a wacky different contract. I mean, everything in there is pretty reasonable. You know, if I signed up for this and then I couldn't go because I had a wedding to go to or something, um, I would expect to have to lose those non-refundable charges. I think the issue with what we're talking about now with the June trip is that there's a global pandemic that nobody expected. And uh, if, if we're talking about the difference between getting a 100% voucher that somebody could take and use later on, they don't lose any money. It's just, it's, it's moving on talking about people wanting 100% cash back because of an unprecedented situation. So I don't see that anybody signed a bad contract because they didn't know what they were looking at and that if we looked at it as a school committee and approved it ahead of time, we, we would have stopped this. So I, I guess I kind of don't understand what we're, we're talking about here because we've been doing this for 20 years, right? I can, I can say uh, during my eight years, as uh, assistant superintendent of finance and operations and a uh, year and a half as superintendent, I've never been asked to have someone look at the contract. And I would anticipate the reason why is because the contract again is between EF tours and the families. Um, but again, I will say any contract that I am asked to sign, whether it's the baseball field contract, a contract to renovate Tiger Den, those are all contracts that I've had attorney Gay review uh, prior to signing or having someone in his office sign. In the past, we've had a city solicitor look at those contracts as well. So uh, that is a practice we have in place. Uh, I don't think it's a bad practice and I can see it applying to this because I would like to see language in contracts that would make families whole in the event that it, it, something is canceled due to something of this nature. Okay, thank you. All right, so what is the wish of the members? We have a motion and a second. Is everyone ready to vote? Yes. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, I'm sorry, we're doing roll call roll call votes. Roll call vote. Uh, roll call vote, Mrs. Fagan. Oh, you're on mute, Mrs. Fagan. I'm up now. All set? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ms. Doherty? No. That was a no? That was a no. Correct. Okay. Mr. Pulowski? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Fagan votes yes. Mr. Martin? Mr. Martin, you're on mute. Just press your space bar. Mr. Martin, you're still on mute. 
if you just press your space bar, it should unmute it if you hold it. There you go. That's because somebody put me on mute, yes. Mrs. Almeida? Yes. Mr. DeMello? Yes. Mr. D'Souza? David's on mute. I'm on two mute, somebody muted me. Yes. That's it. Uh, no, you didn't get me. I I'm sorry, it. Mr. Fiore. I'm vote. sorry. Okay, vote yes. So that's uh, seven in favor, one opposed. The motion passes. Mayor O'Connell? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I, who said that? I did. No, I, not to vote. Oh, you don't have to vote on this one. No, I, I went to speak before and I got lost in the shuffle of this Oh, I apologize. Conversation. I, I had a couple of questions for Attorney Gay. Um, first of all, you, you keep talking about canceling the trip. This school committee voted to cancel that trip a while ago. So I don't know why that's even still an issue. Do they formally know that, the company? Oh, yes. All right, so there's no, there's no sense in discussing it because we canceled it. No, no, they, they know that. And, and one of their alternatives is, is to provide vouchers for those students who may be still in school next year that can still use that. Um, that's one alternative. The other alternative is to get their, get their money back less $500. All right, so my, my grandson is on that trip. I didn't pay for it, so this isn't about me, but I know that he's not gonna be able to do that trip next year. So they, they, wanted, they don't wanna reschedule another trip. They so, had May 15th to make that notice, make, make that notice. In the letter they will get from the superintendent will explain that. All right, so that's what I asked last week and nobody had an answer for, is it the parents that are supposed to say, we don't wanna go or was, the thing from the school committee enough no 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 they have to take action christine all right so that wasn't made clear the second thing david is the whole start of the seed of all these trips is taught in high school in uh, the history department all right so when you say it's not an agency issue that's where it starts from it's not like these 75 parents got together and organized this trip it's origination is the school department. So explain to me why this is not an agency issue with the school department. And frankly, I'm never gonna vote on another trip. Never, done. Because I've seen too many people get hurt by this. We have parents that have lost jobs, all kinds of issues, and this is a disgrace. And you know what? You can say, oh, the company didn't expect it. Neither did all these parents. No, I agree. And, and we've tried to make that point pretty clearly. The company's done as far as they, at least as of now, as far as they said they could go. I think in great part because of the, the policy as John, as Superintendent Cabral stated about being uniform throughout all their, all their various groups. Um, I understand what you're saying, but the contracts are not processed through the school department. As, as Mr. Cabral said, the first time I saw this contract was just a month ago. I mean, no one sent it to us beforehand and said, you need to look at this. Not that there's anything critically wrong with the contract. I mean, it's, as, as Mr. Pulowski said, it's a pretty straightforward contract. And if you take the time to read it, you would understand it. But the, st the, the problem we're in is, we're in a, what you just said, we're in a situation that no one anticipated. The company didn't anticipate. Obviously, we didn't anticipate. The school committee didn't anticipate. Nobody really is at fault for the fact that this, trans this trip is not occurring. The question is, how much, re how, how reasonable is their response to this? And we can go back and make one more tr try at it, um, but I, I, there's nothing I can force them to do. I mean, all we can say is we would more appreciate it, and it, we've used this company for years, but we could more appreciate the fact that they do something better than $500. Right, it would, which is all the more reason, David, why they could be a little bit better about this, but I, I've got to tell you, it, it bothers me. The, these trips just don't come out of nowhere. My, my, my other granddaughter's been on them. You know, she went to a couple, and they, and they always go to the same companies. I'm sure they use all the same places to sleep. It's not like this. They, they've got this pretty fine-tuned and honed, as far as I'm concerned. Let me ask you another question. What is that? You said something about insurance. My son signed up for insurance on that trip. I don't know what he's insured for. He, I couldn't figure it out reading what he had. 
I, I, I didn't say, I didn't mention someone else mentioned insurance. They, they, there is trip, trip cancellation insurance that is generally. Oh, that wouldn't cover you getting the money back? Oh, it should. I mean, if they have, if they signed up for it, it should cover them. I, uh, that's a good point. No one's ever asked whether they did or they didn't. Mr. Mr. Cabral and then Mr. Pulaski has a comment. Uh, okay. Just to uh, reference Mrs. Fagan's insurance comment. Yes. Uh, I brought up insurance in relationship to the cancellation of the Dominican Republic trip. The yep. EFR's insurance policy was able to make them whole while they reimbursed everyone who canceled the Dominican trip. That was the reference to the insurance, Mrs. Fagan. That was and that insurance. And, and, yeah, and everything so, that you've stated. What would you recommend to any parent who, who paid the insurance that they directly contact track the company and say, I have the insurance, I paid for it? Well, Mr. Pulaski might know a thing or two about this. So if we could let him comment. Yeah, yes. so <clears throat> I had spoken with uh, Mr. Perper earlier. So in this case, the insurance company, and I'm, I'm spacing on the name of the insurance company, they said that they are not going to cover losses um, for people who decide not to go on the trip due to COVID-19. The only way that they're covering that trip through insurance is if you can't go because you have contracted COVID-19. So in this case, we've decided as a school committee that we're canceling the case, the, the trip to be safe. So all the individual students have to make the decision about whether they're going to take the voucher, whether they're going to want all their money back. But because we're not going because we've decided we don't want to go, the insurance company's not covering that. Whereas with the Dominican uh, trip, the insurance company just covered the whole thing. So that's why EF Tours was able to give everybody you know, the full cash refund. So that, that it's, it's, it's the insurance company. If we, if we have gripes with anybody, we have gripes with the insurance company. Thank you. Mr. DeMello. Thank you, Mayor. So we're talking about policy. There was a motion on the floor passed about amending policies. And yet we have our very own school committee member that has a child signed up for a trip in 2021 that has not even come before the school committee. How can this even be possible? How can this, how can Mrs. Mr. Pawalski and other children on 2021 be signed up paying for trips that has not been approved by the school committee? How can that even be possible? Yeah, and that's the concern of mine that we should not be collecting any funds or authorizing or asking any family to make any deposit of funds on a trip that has not been approved by the school committee. So that is something that we need to address. I will address with the high school regarding all, any future trip. So Madam Mayor, so my motion is the following. I would like to make a motion that the Taunton Public School System, Taunton Public School District, or anything to do with Taunton Public Schools no longer uses EF Tours, which is also known as Education First, any of their brands, which has seven different brands from April 22 going forward, or as long as I'm a school committee. That's the motion on the floor. Second. Motion made and seconded. No discussion. Roll call, Mrs. Fagan. Ms. Doherty. You're on mute, Mrs. Doherty. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Pulaski? No. Mr. Fiore? Yes. Mr. Stegan votes yes. Mr. Martin? You're on mute, Mr. Martin. <clears throat> Just press your space bar. Yeah, you no. Mrs. Almeida? I'm going to vote no because I don't think it's legal to do that. That's Mr. black Mello. Next. Yes. Mr. Souza? No. I guess you, I don't know where that is, Mayor, uh, Mayor O'Connell. You? Three, four, one, two, four, 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 four. I guess the ball's in your court. <laughs> no. The motion does not pass. Madam Mayor. But uh, I think Mr. Souza did have his hand up and then I'll call you, Mrs. Doherty. 
Yeah, I, I'm going back to the original when I had my hand up there, a little back before that a couple of motions were made. So I just want to make sure um, before we end this EF tour um, conversation tonight, I just want to make sure we have we're clear on where just so the members are here that are clear on what's going to happen. So I heard two things. I, the first thing I heard was that we're going to move forward with the attorney Gates recommendation that um, the superintendent draft a letter to the parents and that they're going to get the uh, cash refund less than 500. But now attorney Gay has also said that uh, he's going to try one more time. So uh, to attorney Gay and the superintendent, just so everyone's clear, let's come up, formulate a quick plan here. So we're all, we all know the steps that are going to take place. Mr. Cabral. Thank you, Madam. Attorney, Attorney Gay and I, uh, we, we've, a, we've asked to meet with the EF Tours or to speak with the EF Tours president. So that is something that I asked the Massachusetts director to uh, coordinate for me and Attorney Gay. So that is something that we will uh, hopefully hear back from them soon in the near future and schedule that call. We'll try to, we'll try to do that uh, as soon as possible so that we can get a letter out to the parents as soon as possible. I think that's the I think that's the most important thing is we we, we have to we have to uh, notify the parents so they can contact the EF and get and get what they can for their money back. I think that's the most important thing now is we still have a few more weeks. I think May fifteenth, but I think within the next week we have to start moving on formulating a letter so all, all the parents are clear what's going on. Uh, Madam Mayor, Mayor Moss, set. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Doherty. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just I just want to say that we. I think that there is folly in making such um, broad-based decisions, uh, i.e. looking at the contract when the contract d doesn't even come to us, it goes to the families. Uh, what do we say to the families? We don't like the contract, you shouldn't sign it. Uh, I think that um, we have had so many discussions about EF tours and how we don't like them and how unfair they are. and yet we continue on uh, agreeing that we should go forward with them. And I'm not in the travel business, so I can only rely on Mr. DeMello, the superintendent, Mr. Bro everybody else, but not myself. But there, again, there's folly without seeing all of the documents, without looking at the history, uh, without reviewing what it is that we are doing um, on an ongoing basis. We wanna make some serious decisions about the way in which we handle travel going forward then we need to have everything in front of us, and we don't. And so we make these decisions um, that we may not enjoy implementing as time goes forward. So I'd like to make a recommendation that at the next meeting, or maybe subsequently, because we have our budget to deal with, that we pull together all of the materials, the policies, the student handbook, and so forth, a view of the contract, letters, et cetera, so that we can have the full package in front of us and make decisions going forward about how we handle travel from here on. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome, Mr. DeMello. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Cabral, uh, through you, Mayor, any letter that you draft, if you make any reference to school committee that this is the best plan of action on behalf of the school committee or in the best interest of the student on behalf of the school committee, I wanna be recorded that I'm not part of that best action plan, okay? I don't want, if you mention anything to do with school committee on those letters, I want you to either uh, uh, clearly state that I am not in agreement with the, the resolution that they're offering us. Thank you. Okay, we're ready to move on. Uh, Mrs. Fagan, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, just one more question uh, to Attorney Gay. Yes, ma'am. David, the um, if if a, like my for my family, my son, he's not going to be able to go next year on that same trip because of trips they have planned. So that's not that's not a reason for getting your money back, because we voted about COVID. You'd have to be crazy as a parent to put your kid on a plane at this time of year. I never even see a plane in the sky anymore. No, I, I, I understand. I have a granddaughter in Braintree that's in the same situation, different company going to Spain this year and they are getting everything back except $500. So. But see, David, part of the problem is, is that when those things came before us, you know, we assumed that they had been 
vetted by somebody that all they hmm. wanted was our approval. And it's not only about it's not only about their behavior. It's also about when they go on these trips. They're supposed to have like some kind of a a thing going on that it has something to do with what they're studying and history and all that stuff. So they go with study guides and all those things. That's the other thing. My understanding of this is that the reason those trips are so expensive is because all the all the people that go as chaperones go without paying those expenses. Is there any way if you can find that out? Um, I'm pretty sure that is a common practice that the chaperone fee or the chaperone costs are picked up uh, by the students as part okay. of the, you know, I know that was the case with the Washington DC trips right. uh, that we scheduled when I was a principal at Freeman. So I would think that would apply to these trips as well. Does that make any difference at all, David? No, I'm sorry. I wish I could say yes, but no. But it still, it still speaks to the agency thing that there's something there. Yeah. Indirectly, yes, but unfortunately, uh, okay. it's a contract, and we don't, we're not part of the contract. And I don't know why we have to vote on it then. Okay, so thank you. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Fagan. Uh, Mr. Cabral, are you through with your update and ready to move on, or is, are you still in? I just want to give my leadership team an opportunity to give a 15 second elevator comment on the work we've been doing regarding COVID-19. So I'm gonna open things up to Mr. Barada. Real quick, 15 second elevator speech, Mr. Barada. Okay, Mr. Cabral went over a lot of the educational component from Commissioner Riley about the power standards that are being going forward, which are those essential skills that all students will need to accomplish in order to be uh, promoted to the next grade. I think we're in very good standing with that because our initial component for our plans were to look at uh, student areas of weakness so we could remediate. So that was based upon not only our own teacher generated exams, but also some of our standardized uh, map testing and such. So we should be in good stead with looking at the remediation of skills. We'll be shifting towards the new learning uh, standards that the state will identify. One thing that Kathy Perry and I can finish up because I probably have about five more seconds to speak mm -hmm. is the kindergarten registration. Uh, myself, Kathy Perry, Carolyn Bueno, along with the community facilitators, which Kathy will elaborate on, is looking to launch next week the uh, kindergarten, actually new student registration portal. Uh, one little delay, if there is a delay, is that we wanna make sure that the Google Translator bar is very evident on the screen. Right now it's sort of hidden. We wanna make sure that that's uh, in plain view uh, so that any family uh, with different languages can register. Uh, we have a ticket out to have that um, amended on the website. Uh, otherwise, we should be good to go. Thank you. Mm. Uh, great work, Mr. Barada. Thank you for all your efforts behind the scenes to put this all together. Uh, Mrs. Mulroney, speaking directly on uh, special education and related service matters. Um, so the district released its virtual conferencing guidelines, which now has allowed us to open up uh, virtual team meetings. We met with guidance yesterday to explain the process and introduce the new forms. Uh, Amy, Jen, and I met individually with guidance counselors today to set schedules for team meetings. So hopefully those will be starting next week. Um, we're continuing to reinforce communication with our families. I'm meeting with all related service providers Thursday and Friday to make sure that service delivery is appropriate for our students. And we're continuing to follow the guidance as it's given to us from DESE. That's it. And I do want to echo uh, Mrs. Mulroney and also give her and your team a shout out because the guidance has been slow regarding special education that we've been receiving from the states and the federal government. So we have a very good handle on the education piece and she's working very hard with her team to make sure that our special education parents, our CPAC parents are aware of what DESI is asking us to do as they receive information from the federal government. So great work to you, Mrs. Mulroney, during these very difficult times. And then we're gonna turn things over to Mrs. Perry, Mrs. Moynihan, talk about operations, meals, and, uh, and then we'll close with Mrs. Mitchell talking about communications. Um, so I'll just hop on quickly about the um, kindergarten registration. We'll be, in addition to providing the online portal, we will have the paper and pencil packets available at the lunch sites. We will also have four hotlines available for parents <laughs> um, to, 
parents that speak Portuguese, Spanish, French, and English, all four with questions regarding registration. So hopefully this will, this will um, run smoothly. It will be um, in play by the end of next week. So I did jump on Improving Taunton today and put a comment out there, but I think we'll continue to advertise it a little um, bit more vehemently. As far as parent contact goes, great news in that department. We are 100% contacted with the elementary schools. We are just two students shy in the middle school that we're continuing to look for, and only nine students left at the high school. So we're down to 11 students um, out of our 8,000 plus. Um, I will say in large part, it was definitely problems with phone numbers because we found with our community facilitators and with our SRO, John Peterson, um, who has done a tremendous job. We've been able to get out to the houses and out to the um, different places to visit. So things have really, um, really come together there. And it's, it's also enabled us an opportunity to be able to meet the needs of, of many families. Um, as far as the registration, one more um, component to that. In the meantime, we are still taking registrations. We're doing it the traditional way. So the parents are contacting me and then we're able to, I'm able to funnel it out and the guidance secretaries as well as the guidance counselors are working on completing the registration. So all is well in that area. Thank you, Mrs. Moynihan. Thank you, Mrs. Perry. I appreciate you being very succinct with your comments. Mrs. Moynihan. Um, I'll just do a brief one on our lunches. As you are knowing that we do have various lunch sites throughout the um, throughout the city, averaging lunch is about 1,500 lunches per day. When we do have packet Fridays, we do see a significant jump of over an additional 1,000 uh, lunches, where last Friday, where there was a packet Friday, um, we at the lunch sites, we served um, over 2,500 lunches um, to our to our students. Um, another thing too, building checks are being done every day inside and outside, checking on buildings, the perimeters, making sure, especially with all of this crazy weather, that our buildings are not sustaining any damages. And then lastly, our finance office is working fully remotely where they are paying our invoices and also doing payroll remotely at their homes. And then last but not least, um, Attorney, Attorney Mitchell, just a quick update on our communications. Yes, um, so this morning, or yep, last night, Superintendent Cabral issued um, a brief communication to families letting them know about the extended school closure. Uh, the high school will be issuing a separate letter um, probably tonight or tomorrow morning to um, a separate letter to seniors and then a letter to eighth through 11th graders talking about um, the extended closure as well. Uh, additionally, um, Desi's special ed office, finally, they've given us about three weeks worth of warning that they're going to be sending a letter to families. They finally sent that to us. And so they've asked individual districts to be distributing that to families. So we will be getting that out to our families likely tomorrow, as well as to our CPAC, um, talking about uh, Desi's uh, view of special education services during this time. We've also been sharing that with our staff. And then uh, earlier this week, we worked uh, collaboratively with the TEA to put together an elementary communication to families, addressing um, the concerns that we've been hearing. The families were feeling a little overwhelmed with all the materials that, um, through all the hard work of our staff, have been coming to them. So we wanted to just clarify that, you know, the, at the elementary level, the packets are our primary um, the primary area of focus and then um, teachers will be providing one supplemental activity per day going forward and then students will also be asked to participate in one of their uh, specialist activities art music gym um, per day as well so that they're not feeling so overwhelmed we want them to um, to be able to have a little bit more guidance and focus and also our teachers also not to feel like they're putting in a lot of time um, and then uh, and they are, they're all putting in wonderful amounts of time um, and then students not being sure how to engage in everything. Families to teachers, et cetera. Thank you, Attorney Mitchell. And then I just wanna echo uh, what I shared during our Joint Labor Management Committee meeting last Friday uh, with the school committee, the leadership team, and also our principals. I also wanna give a huge uh, thanks and shout out of praise to our school board 
uh, for trusting the leadership team to work collaboratively with the TEA to give us space to do this very important work, knowing that it's, it's different. It doesn't look the same in any district. So I appreciate you trusting me, the leadership team, you know, to do what's right for our 8,000 students and also for our 1,300 employees. You deserve a lot of credit uh, for the work that you are doing to, to support us as we you know, enter into these uh, uncharted waters together. So thank you all for your support. Thank you, Ms. Crawford. Uh, Mrs. Doherty? You're on mute, Mrs. Doherty. Just in regard to communication, I think a little while ago you had asked if we wanted to be included in any robocalls that you made. I don't know if any have been made, but I have not received any. And if you would share those written communications as you had indicated that you would with us as well, that would be very helpful. So I, I'm going to ask Mrs. Devine. I think uh, Wendy may have reached out to you. If, if not, she'll reach out to you again. Yes, yeah, she has done that. Yes. Yeah. So we want to make sure that you, because um, I have to admit, I am human. I do make errors every now and then and sometimes forget to CC or email board members after communications go out. So I apologize if there are communications that we try to send out in a hurry and I forget to email the most important group, which is my school board. So um, that is something that uh, I know um, is something that I own. Uh, and obviously uh, anything that I can do to improve how myself and the leadership team are handling this crisis, uh, I welcome your feedback. And uh, obviously we'll do our best to make sure that we get it done in addition to making sure our 8,000 students are educated and our 1,300 employees are compensated and, uh, and cared for. So uh, please, 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 uh, in the event I do forget to send out an email, please give Wendy your contact information and we'll have Carolyn Blanot enter it into School Brains so that when we do all user emails or do robocalls, you will receive them. So a home number and a cell phone number would be greatly appreciated, as well as an email. Your email should be in the system. If it's not, I'll make sure Carolyn enters it to make sure that you receive communications. And uh, I'll make it part of my checklist to make sure I CC school committee members. Okay, thank you. All right, are we all set? Moving, Mr. Pulaski, is your hand up? Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll be quick. I, I've got three questions around uh, the remote learning. Um, so Mr. Cabral touched on this a little bit, so I understand there will have to be some negotiating with unions regarding uh, educator evaluation. So I guess I'd like to know the timeline because my concern is I, I want to make sure that we are um, properly assessing um, uh, educators through remote learning and that we are able to provide them with what they need uh, to make improvements. To, so do we have a timeline on, on coming up with some sort of a method um, of evaluation and, and holding the teachers during remote learning? Ms. Cabral, you're on mute. Yep, I apologize. Yeah, so the Eddie Val, again, has to do with how we evaluate teachers. And usually that has to do with classroom observations, walkthroughs, unannounced walkthroughs, announced walkthroughs. So that cannot be done remotely. So um, we, we are gonna draft an MOA that we will share with the TEA and welcome their feedback. And then obviously once we get their feedback, I will have Attorney Gay I'll review the MOA along with Attorney Mitchell. And then I will bring it to the TEA subcommittee and we can share it with the full group as well. Okay, thank you. Um, second question. Um, when do you suppose, or will, will we start collecting data on um, student um, engagement in remote learning? Um, will we be able to see like what percentage of students are actually actively participating in remote learning across the different schools? So Mrs. Bonneau, uh, and I, was, I wasn't aware of this, but ClassLink, which is on our website in the education portal, when a student signs into ClassLink, and utilizes any of the apps, or any of the resources uh, that's in the class link folder, we have analytics that we can see how much time a student is spending on a certain app and how much time the student is engaged. And I do know at the high school, uh, we don't necessarily have data at the high school, but what the high school is doing, teachers are compiling a list of names and sending it to the house office secretary who will then make calls to find out why students are not engaged. So uh, I just have C data right now, Mr. Pulaski, and the C data in my home 
uh, a lot of students are participating. It's highly engaged. Our students are highly engaged is what, I, what I'm seeing. And again, that's, that's only an eighth grader and a sixth grader. But the analytics, the problem we run into with the analytics, if a student doesn't click on ClassLink or enter via ClassLink, we don't have their data. So it might not be an accurate or full accurate picture, but it will give us some data. Okay, thank you. So yeah, I would, I would definitely be interested in seeing a plan of, of how we could analyze that data. Again, all in the interest of continuous improvement. We, we wanna, this is all uncharted territory. It's all brand new. No one expects it to be perfect, but the better we analyze this data and consult with the educational experts, I think the better we're gonna be as this go, goes along. So, and in those same lines, my, my final question is, do we have any update on the proposed um, uh, survey to uh, assess uh, feedback from students and, and parents uh, with remote learning? Actually, I, I do. I had, a, I had a superintendent's call with the uh, regional superintendents, urban superintendents in southeastern Massachusetts. And one of my colleagues has already uh, created a survey for elementary, middle, and high school. So we are going to look at that survey as well as your survey and create something that reflects Tartan. And I believe we discussed last week sending that out Friday, May 1st, because we wanted to give our parents three weeks uh, with this remote learning plan. Mr. Cabral, if I could interject that those uh, our template for uh, student feedback, family feedback, and teacher feedback was completed today, and I'll forward them for your review tonight. Mr. Barada, please make sure I get them as well as uh, Mrs. Devine, we'll put them in the packet. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, I'm all set. All right, thank you. All right, moving on to C, critical items not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance. I guess that's me if no one else has anything. Mr. Souza. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, first of all, I just want to thank um, Madam Mayor, my fellow school committee members, and the leadership team. This is tough. We're all working hard. We're all trying to come to the same common goal, no matter what angle we're coming at. And uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, your, your, your valued input. And uh, this is just going to go on for <laughs> a while. So. Uh, Thank you all. And uh, again, the same agenda as tonight will be next Wednesday at 4.30. will be a, a special meeting of the school committee on the off Wednesday, and it will be the same agenda. And uh, if there's any questions or concerns anyone needs, just like give me a call, or, uh, and uh, we'll be happy to, to, happy to address them. And thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Stay safe. Thank you, Mr. Souza. Mrs. Doherty, you are on mute. You're on mute, Mrs. Doherty. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, to Mr. Cabral, we had talked about the bus contract. Has there been any resolution to, to the bus contract and whether we are paying a full amount for the year or what? We are close. We are close. So the five communities, the five communities that utilize our vendor have been working uh, with our vendor and I'm not ready to report. Uh, yet, but we are close to sharing that information with the school committee. And what I can say is, it will not—it will not be the full amount. Right. So, so the other districts are using Bloom. Is that? There are five districts that utilize our vendor. And that's Bloom, right? Correct. Thank you. No other vendor, and we're talking about buses and vans as well. Large yellow buses in town vans. And little vans, thank you. And the, uh, the second thing is thank you, uh, Superintendent, for informing us of the passing of an eighth grader. And I think that we should acknowledge that and take a moment of silence uh, in honor of him. Madam Mayor, if you don't mind. Yes, of course, would you like to? Just a moment of silence, thank you. Okay, thank you. Our thoughts and prayers are with that family, friends, uh, the school community, uh, and everyone else. It was very um, tragic. Any other items for C? Mrs. Fagan. Just one other thing, and I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Cabral, the athletic director. 
his award. Go ahead, Mr. Yeah, Crawford. so I, I, shame on me. Uh, I forgot to inform the entire school board that Mr. Otto Vianelli uh, was recognized for a national award for his work as superintendent to grow our programs at Taunton High School, for his involvement in the Hockamock League, and also for his involvement with the MIAA. I don't have the official award or what he was recognized for with, uh, on me, but I will include it. Uh, Mr. Devine, could you make sure we include it in the packet uh, that'll go out Friday or Monday so that school committee is aware. So, uh, and again, that's a lot of that is you. I mean, you provided us with the resources and given us the green light to grow our program. So we're lucky to have someone like Mark who can carry out uh, your wishes. And uh, we are just very, very blessed to have a, um, a tremendous athletic and extracurricular program that any student who wants to engage in can engage in and participate. Yes, Mr. And he's gonna be really happy because you appointed him as superintendent just now. <laughs> you said that instead of athletic director. <laughs> I, I, he was recognized for athletic director of the year. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Fagan. Mrs. Almeida. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I want to thank the superintendent and his staff for always um, watching out for our backs and in the best interest of all the kids in town. And I think that they've been doing a wonderful job under the circumstances that we have. Madam Mayor, I think that you've done a good job informing the community on a daily basis. And um, we're all going to get through this some way, shape, or form. And hopefully in September, our kids will go back to school and we'll be able to embrace them and have fun because this is not a fun way for them to, to be educated at this point. But thank you for all your hard work and I appreciate it. Uh, well, well, thank you. It's always nice for everyone to hear some words of encouragement and support. And I just want to say, Mrs. Almeida, um, I feel like we should be doing more. There are times where I feel like we're not doing enough to support our kids and our families and our staff. So uh, th thank you. I appreciate those words. Okay. Anything else? How about a motion to adjourn, Mayor O'Connell? <laughs> second. Welcome that. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. So voted. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful day. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Stay safe, everyone.